Operation Plumbob was a series of nuclear tests conducted between May 28 and October 7, 1957, at the Nevada test site, following Project 57, and preceding Project 5858 say. The operation consisted of 29 explosions, of which only two did not produce any nuclear yield. 21 laboratories and government agencies were involved, while most Operation Plumbob tests contributed to the development of warheads for intercontinental and intermediate-range missiles, they also tested air defense and anti-submarine warheads with smaller yields. They included 43 military effects tests on civil and military structures, radiation and biomedical studies, and aircraft structural tests. Operation Plumbob had the tallest tower tests to date in the U.S. nuclear testing program as well as high-altitude balloon tests. One nuclear test involved the largest troop maneuver ever associated with U.S. nuclear testing. The military was interested in knowing how the average foot soldier would stand up, physically and psychologically, to the rigors of the tactical nuclear battlefield. Almost 1,200 pigs were subjected to biomedical experiments and blast effect studies during Operation Plumbob. On shot Priscilla, 719 pigs were used in various experiments on Frenchman Flat. Some pigs were placed in elevated cages and provided with suits made of different materials, to test which materials provided best protection from the thermal radiation. As shown and reported in the PBS documentary Dark Circle, the pigs survived, but with third-degree burns to 80% of their bodies. Other pigs were placed in pens behind large sheets of glass at measured distances from the hypocenter to test the effects of flying debris on living targets. Studies were conducted of radioactive contamination and fallout from a simulated accidental detonation of a weapon, and projects concerning earth motion, blast loading and neutron output were carried out. Nuclear weapons safety experiments were conducted to study the possibility of a nuclear weapon detonation during an accident. On July 26, 1957, a safety experiment, Pascal A, was detonated in an unstemmed hole at the Nevada test site, becoming the first underground shaft nuclear test. The knowledge gained here would provide data to prevent nuclear yields in case of accidental detonations for example, in a plane crash. The John shot on July 19, 1957, was the only test of the Air Force's Air 2 Genie missile with a nuclear warhead. It was fired from an F-89J Scorpion fighter over Yucca Flats at the Nevada National Security Site. On the ground, the Air Force carried out a public relations event by having five Air Force officers and a videographer stand under ground zero of the blast, which took place at between 18,500 and 20,000 feet altitude, with the idea of demonstrating the possibility of the use of the weapon over civilian populations without ill effects. The Rainier shot, conducted September 19, 1957, was the first fully contained underground nuclear test, meaning that no fission products were vented into the atmosphere. This test of 1.7 knots could be detected around the world by seismologists using ordinary seismic instruments. The Rainier test became the prototype for larger and more powerful underground tests. Some images from Upshot Knothole Grable were accidentally relabeled as belonging to the Priscilla shot from Operation Plumbob in 1957. As a consequence many publications including official government documents have the photo mislabeled. In 1956, Dr. Robert Brownlee, from Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, was asked to examine whether nuclear detonations could be conducted underground. The first subterranean test was the nuclear device known as Pascal A, which was lowered down a 500 feet borehole. The detonated yield turned out to be 50,000 times greater than anticipated, creating a jet of fire that shot hundreds of feet into the sky. During the Pascal B nuclear test of August 1957, a 900 kg steel plate cap was welded over the borehole to contain the nuclear blast even though Brownlee predicted it would not work. When Pascal B was detonated, the blast went straight up the test shaft, launching the cap into the atmosphere at a speed of more than 66 km per second. Scientists believe compression heating caused the cap to vaporize as it sped through the atmosphere. The high-speed camera, which took one frame per millisecond, was focused on the borehole because studying the velocity of the plate was deemed scientifically interesting. The plate appeared in only one frame, but this was enough to make an estimation of its speed. Dr. Brownlee joked the best estimate of the cover's speed from the photographic evidence was it was going like a bat. Brownlee estimated that the explosion, combined with the specific design of the shaft, could accelerate the plate to approximately six times Earth's escape velocity. In 2015 Dr. Brownlee said, I have no idea what happened to the cap, but I always assumed that it was probably vaporized before it went into space. Later calculations made during 2019 are strongly in favor of vaporization.
Of course, the absence of the projectile is not conclusive evidence that the launch into space was successful. Despite the absence of a hypersonic projectile, the Pascal cylinder and cover plate were also missing. Even standard artillery shell velocity can hurl an object hundreds of kilometers away, out from the scope of any practical search operation. While developing and refining air defense and anti-submarine weapon systems, warheads with smaller yields were also tested during Plumbob. The majority of the shots fired during Plumbob were intended to test design principles for nuclear warheads that would be mounted on intercontinental and intermediate range missiles. The military also sought to comprehend how nuclear blasts affected various aircraft, as well as civilian and military structures. A sizable airship was struck by the shockwave from a nuclear explosion during one test, and it promptly collapsed. The tremendous amount of radiation released into the atmosphere during the nuclear testing phase of Operation Plumbob is responsible for its contentious legacy. The Plumbob test series released over 58,300 kilocalories of radioiodine I-131, into the atmosphere during a four-month period, according to recently declassified papers. This resulted in 120 million person rads of thyroid tissue exposure for all civilians, or about 32% of the exposure from all continental nuclear testing. In addition to exposing the general public, troop drills held close to the scene of shooting, Smokey, exposed nearly 3,000 service members to comparatively high radiation levels. These troops had much higher rates of leukemia than average, according to a 1980 survey.